Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A monk frozen for over 100 years finally wakes up and must learn to master the four elements to defeat the Fire Nation army that is destroying the entire planet. Today we will recap the story of the 2010 movie, The Last Airbender. On our planet four great forces govern the spirit world, air, water, earth and fire. In all nations, each has an affinity for one of the four elements, with the exception of a single person, the Avatar. And each incarnation is born in a different body and nation, but always learns to master all the elements. In the Southern Water Tribe, Katara, the clan's last remaining dominator, and her brother Sokka are hunting some seals for food. Following the trails of the animals, they come to a frozen lake where something begins to glow beneath the ice. Curious to find out what was causing the effect, Sokka takes his weapon and starts hitting the ground, opening several cracks and forcing them to run so they don't fall into the extremely cold water. Suddenly, a large sphere of ice begins to emerge and inside we can see that there is someone with glowing eyes. Afraid of it being a Fire Nation trap, Sokka begins to slowly retreat, but Katara steals her brother's weapon and strikes the large sphere, which releases a blast of icy air that knocks her back. The globe then begins to shatter and a large beam of light appears pointing towards the sky, as if it were a beacon. In the sea near the tribe, a large vessel from the country of fire that was passing by sees it and decides to go to the village to investigate. Once the sphere is completely destroyed, Katara approaches the crater that has formed and finds a small boy along with a colossal bison. As they approach the boy who is called Aang, he brothers notice that the boy is extremely weak and take him to the village where he can stay until he regains his strength. Back in the village, Aang and Katara have a brief conversation where the boy says that he left the air temple in the south a few days ago and that he needed to return to his home. Outside, the population can see the large Fire Nation ship approaching from the horizon and imagining a possible combat, Sokka hides the young ones where Aang was. Along with the troops, Prince Zuko, son of the Fire Lord arrives, asking to bring all the elders to him. Some of the soldiers then begin to enter the huts looking for the elderly, and one of them enters right where the young ones were. As soon as he realizes that there was no elder there, the man turns to leave, however, he notices Aang covering his head with the red hood and walks over to him to remove it. Surprised by the strange tattoos that the boy has on his head, the man decides to take him to the prince. Seeing Aang's tattoos, which are the marks of an airbender, Zuko decides to take him to his ship, feeling it's his obligation to help the mystery boy since they were the ones who found him. Katara manages to convince Sokka that they should go rescue him, but when they begin to wonder how they would get to the boat, they discover that the boy's bison named Appa can float and they decide to use him for the rescue. Before leaving, the brothers go to talk to their grandmother and discover that those tattoos are from the airbenders, something that hasn't been seen in over a hundred years. According to the elderly woman, the last avatar that was born was supposed to be an airbender, but was never found, making the lady believe that he is the current incarnation of the legendary spiritual warrior who finally appeared to save them from the tyranny of the Fire Nation. On the ship, Zuko and his uncle, General Iroh, perform a test on the boy, placing a lit candle, a stone and some water on the table. Upon seeing that the three objects react to Aang's presence, he officially passed the test, confirming that the boy really is the avatar and has the power to control the four elements. With that, Zuko decides to take him as a prisoner to the land of fire, but the boy refuses to go and uses the element of air to escape. Upon arriving on the deck of the ship, Aang sees Sokka and Katara arriving with Appa and when he is cornered by the fire army, he transforms his staff into a glider and creates a current of air that carries him to his friends. Along with his brothers, Aang returns to the Southern Air Temple to meet his friends and masters, but when they arrive, the only thing they find inside is a flying lemur bat. As they don't find the other monks, the boy assumes they are in the prayer field and runs there, but once he gets there, Aang finds nothing but a huge pile of bones. It turns out that since they knew the next avatar would be an airbender, the monks tested the four elements on all the young men, including Aang. Upon discovering that he was the spiritual leader of the generation, the boy refused to carry such a responsibility and fled the temple along with Appa. When they were passing by the sea of the Southern Water Tribe, they went through a huge storm and trying to protect themselves, Aang created a sphere of air around them, but they still ended up falling into the water and there they were frozen for the last hundred years. After the boy fled, the Fire Nation also knew that the next avatar would be born in the Air Temple and so they invaded the place and eliminated all the Dominators in order to prevent the avatar from getting stronger. Aang finds his former master's skeleton, which he recognizes because of the talisman he made for him as a gift. Seeing all that war scenario, the boy feels guilty for having abandoned his home, putting himself in a huge internal conflict and unconsciously entering meditation. In this state, Aang manages to access the spirit world and there he encounters a dragon-shaped spirit who is surprised to see the avatar after more than a century. 
At the same time, Zuko is spotted on his ship by Commander Zhao, one of the Fire Nation's military leaders, and is invited to dine on the man's vessel, where he says that the prince is a weakling and that's why he was banished, treating him like a mediocre brat and humiliating him in front of the entire army. Furious at the invitation only to insult him, Zuko tries to attack him, but is stopped by his uncle. He then gets up and tells the commander that he will still be the Lord of Fire and when that day comes, everyone will have to bow before him, after all he remembers very well the reasons for his banishment. It turns out that some of the prince's friends would be sacrificed in a battle and upon discovering this information, Zuko defended them and tried to stop them from going to war. As a form of punishment, the prince was sentenced to battle, but when it came time to fight, his opponent was none other than the Fire Lord himself. Refusing to fight his own father, Zuko was burned to mark his shame and banished from the Fire Nation. After visiting the temple, Aang and the two brothers pass through the Land Nation and when they are near a small village they find a small boy running away from some fire soldiers. Knowing that the boy will be arrested, Katara begins to manipulate the water and tries to defend him, but as she is the only dominator in her village, there was no one to train her. The only thing the girl manages is to trap her brother in ice. With the disadvantage, the trio decides to surrender and are taken to the small village of the Earthbenders, which is now occupied by the Fire Nation and serving as a prison where everyone is forbidden to use earthbending. Seeing the plight of the population, Aang revolts and tries to encourage them to use their powers to defend themselves from the oppressors, and as a way of encouraging them, he reveals himself to be the Avatar who says he is there to free them. When they see the boy's air powers, the fire handlers come at him saying that all airbenders must die. As soon as the fight begins, the boy who was being chased before starts throwing some rocks at the soldiers' heads. Who, angry, launch a fire blow at him. The boy's father raises an earth shield to protect his son, starting a fight between the firebenders and earthbenders, resulting in the expulsion of the military and the liberation of the population. After they manage to free the village and commit to saving the villages that are in need, Aang reveals that despite being the Avatar, he only learned to dominate the air, because as he fled as soon as he discovered his powers, he didn't have time to train the other three elements. As the next element they must learn is precisely Katara's specialty, they fly towards the Northern Water Tribe where the best masters of this skill are, but on the way they stop in several villages that are being oppressed by the Fire Nation, bringing freedom to all of them. But as was to be expected, all this heroism caught the attention of the Fire Country, and as a result, Zhao sent spies to watch Aang. After gathering some information, the soldiers return and inform the commander that he only uses airbending and that he probably hasn't learned the other elements yet. Knowing this, Zhao immediately assumes he is heading for the Northern Water Tribe and prepares his troops for the attack. Aang notes on the map that they are close to the Northern Air Temple and decides to go there with Appa to maybe get some help or guidance, but when he arrives he finds the place almost completely destroyed and an old monk from the land who used to visit the temple. After a short conversation, the elder realizes that the boy is the Avatar and as he knows the place well, he offers to be his guide. The first place the monk shows is a statue chamber where replicas of all the Avatar's incarnations are, but while he's admiring the artwork, the elder behind him pulls out a knife and dozens of Fire Nation soldiers emerge from behind and manage to capture him once more. It was all just a trap. Chained inside Commander Zhao's ship, Aang wakes up and is surprised by a rather strange figure who frees him after eliminating some guards. As soon as they realize that their prisoner has escaped, the military begins to hunt them down and soon finds them, starting a real battle. While the mysterious guy with the bizarre mask is fighting, Aang uses his wind powers to defeat some of the soldiers and manages a breach to escape, but knowing that his savior will be captured and will lose his life, the Avatar comes back to help him. When Commander Zhao finally appears on the battlefield, he orders his men not to take the Avatar's life, as this would only cause him to be reborn elsewhere. Realizing that Aang's life is the priority for the military, the masked stranger takes advantage of the breach and grabs Aang, using him as a hostage in order to escape, but when they are finally leaving the place, an archer shoots an arrow and hits the man's face, causing him to pass out instantly. Upon removing the person's mask, Aang discovers that the person who rescued him was actually Prince Zuko. With the Fire Lord's son unconscious, the Avatar uses all his power to bring the clouds close and uses them to his advantage, sending it against the soldiers who due to the dense fog cannot see anything at all. Taking advantage of the moment, Aang picks up Zuko and takes him to the middle of the forest, where he knocks him out and leaves. Upon regaining consciousness, the prince returns to his ship which, according to his uncle, was recently searched by Zhao's men. As he enters his room, Zuko begins to hear a strange sound and realizes that the soldiers punctured one of the vessel's gas pipes. Knowing that if he stayed there he would be killed, the boy tries to run outside, but as the explosion was immense, the chances of him surviving are very low. Well, this trap was created, 
as Commander Zhao suspected that the masked person who helped Aang was precisely Zuko. Meanwhile, Aang is finally reunited with Katara and Sokka and together they arrive at the Northern Water Tribe, where he begins training in element bending along with Katara and a few other students. Knowing that Aang's presence is almost a declaration of war against the Fire Nation, the local dominators begin to prepare for combat, while the Avatar increasingly improves its waterbending. In another day of training, while Aang and Katara are practicing in the icy fields, they notice that a large amount of soot begins to fall from the sky, it is the Fire Nation approaching with its huge fleet. With the war about to begin, Aang asks Princess Yu, the ruler of the tribe, if there is any spiritual location in the kingdom where he could meditate and communicate with the dragon spirit so that he might get some hints on how to defeat the nation's troops. The princess then takes Aang to a cave where there is a lake with the spirits of the sea and the moon in the form of two fish. At the entrance of the kingdom, the Fire Nation begins its attack by entering from all sides, even through the ground, in addition to performing several cannon shots and even mounted on huge Komodo dragons. As soon as Aang begins to meditate, Yu and Sokka leave the cave and Katara is on guard waiting for him to finish, but when they are alone, Zuko, who managed to survive Zhao's trap and infiltrated the village, appears behind the girl, starting the battle. Even though she trained a lot and managed to defend herself from her enemy's first blows, Katara doesn't stand a chance against the prince and is knocked out quite easily. With the protector unconscious, Zuko captures Aang who is still meditating and takes him to a hidden location where he watches the chaos outside. In the spirit world, the dragon spirit says that Aang will only be able to defeat his enemies when he finally abandons the feeling of anger and guilt for the death of his people, and that only then will he be able to show the Fire Nation the true power of water. After the conversation, the meditation ends and Aang regains consciousness. Realizing that he is trapped in another location and with Zuko watching him, the Avatar tries to escape, but the prince notices his movement and they start a fight. Outside, Katara who was woken up by Sokka and Yu is walking around the village trying to find them when she sees signs of firebending on one of the houses. Believing it could be Zuko, the young waterbender goes there and this time takes advantage of the prince's distraction to freeze his entire body with a single blow. Outside, the Fire Nation uses immense flamethrowers and manages to melt the huge wall of ice that protects the city. After managing to breach the enemy's defense, Zhao and General Iroh go to the Sea and Moon Cave where the commander takes with a cloth bag one of the spirits that is currently taking the shape of a fish. Zhao's plan is to take the life of the small animal in order to weaken the waterbender's spiritual power. Even though he is a tyrant, the commander needs to work up the courage to do this, and in that time interval Sokka, Katara and Yu arrive in the cave trying to stop him while Aang stayed on the battlefield trying to stop the enemy advance. Upon seeing the trio, Zhao finally gathers the courage and takes the life of the moon spirit, which immediately weakens the waterbending army. As soon as the fish is injured, Yu and Aang lose their strength and the princess ends up passing out because of her closer proximity to the water spirits. When he realizes the gravity of the commander's actions, General Iroh becomes enraged and turns fully against his nation, conjuring his flames to attack Zhao and his commanders. But when they see that the man can summon the flames out of nowhere, everyone is intimidated and even the commander decides to retreat. With the death of the spirit, the Fire Nation begins to take the lead in the fight and suddenly the moon starts to turn red, as if it were a blood moon. After regaining consciousness, Princess Yu decides to offer her life in exchange for the moon spirit, in order to restore strength to the waterbenders and finally win the war. Deciding to sacrifice herself, the young princess enters the water and gives all of her life energy to the moon spirit's body, causing it to return from the dead, but losing her life in the process. After running away from combat with Iroh, the commander who is on one of the walls is confronted by Zuko who surprises him, as he believed he had killed the boy. But when the fight between the two is about to start, the prince's uncle appears behind him and manages to convince his nephew to give up the fight. Taking advantage of the two retreating, Zhao attacks them from behind, but his attack is easily repelled by the general who, after defending himself, retreats again. As the two leave, four water masters appear behind the commander and conjure four huge jets of water that rain down on the man. After the first blow, all that liquid forms a huge bubble that causes the general to drown in midair while suspending his body. When Zhao is already lifeless, the masters dismantle the great sphere, which causes his body to fall from a great height in order to confirm the death of the commanding tyrant. To end the war once and for all, Aang goes to the Great Wall and finally lets his sense of guilt fade away, managing to conjure a massive wall of water that forces the entire Fire Country fleet to retreat so they don't get hit by the huge wall of water, thus ending the fighting. Seeing what Aang is capable of, the remaining Fire Soldiers and Waterbenders bow before the legendary Avatar. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, 
Please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.